What's going on, poor fans? Welcome back to another video on the channel. And today we're going to be talking about Junior Rioli and the potential trade of him coming to Port Adelaide this off-season. It's been a quickly developed story over the last week or so. A lot of linkage and a lot of rumours floating about. And as soon as yesterday it was announced that uh, it's pretty much a done deal to come to Port Adelaide, just a trade will have to be sorted in the trade period. So not only is that an interesting conversation that's come forth in the last week, but also one that I think has divided a few people on their opinions about getting a Junior Rioli to the club. So here's my thoughts today. Let's talk about Junior Rioli joining Port Adelaide. Smart that Waterman soccers it on, and the cross was good to Rioli. The lovely step once, twice. You can't lay a finger on him. Willie Rioli. My eyebrows were definitely um, raised when I heard the rumour that Junior Rioli would be joining Port Adelaide in the off-season. He was uh, at a medical at the Port Adelaide Footy Club on Monday, had coffee with Sean Burgoyne, was taking a tour of the, the club and met a few of the coaches in the playing group. And um, From what all reports suggest, it's a lucrative offer. Port Adelaide are offering a multi-year deal and all Junior Rioli is asking for is stability. Now, unfortunately, he lost um, his father not too long ago and that's why one of the reasons it's not going by Willy Rioli, it's, it's respect for him and his family, and it's going by Junior Rioli at the moment. So full respect to him, and I can definitely see why he wants to set himself up for the future. Um, Post-football, he's 27 years of age. He's probably in his prime of his footy career. He's had two years off due to some you know, ex external reasons and um, obviously the investigation and accusations and also pleading guilty to being um, you know, on on drugs, essentially substances that uh, are not allowed, obviously, in the AFL and are having 18 months off. It's it's a pretty difficult situation. He's definitely learnt a lot in that time, and it's, we know the story of that fact, so I'm not going to dive in too much into that one. But there's a bit of baggage there with Junior, and I think overall, I think that's why people get the perspective um, of him coming to Port Adelaide is probably not what Port fans want in particular. And I can understand the reasoning, you know, for, for the needs that we have. You know, we need a small forward. We need a crafty one. We need someone that's going to be replacing Robbie Gray. And we can't rely on Orazio Fantasia trying to be fit for a full season. So having that stability of Junior Rioli in the forward line could potentially open up a few doors and, and create that um, aspect of you know, having that stable small forward that's constantly down there underneath the tops of Finlayson, Marshall, Dixon and Co. So... It's, it's a good move in that aspect. It's whether or not he suits the Port Adelaide family. Now, I'm not going to judge personal character. I'm not going to judge anything to do with family or um, you know anything that's personal life or outside of the football uh, aspect. I'm purely talking about on-field performances. And you know He's a premiership player. Played in West Coast 2018 flag. He had 28 goals that year. He was a very prolific player. He's a very pressure forward. He, he's a very smart forward. And on his day, he's definitely a great small forward and would suit our game style. I do think he has those positive aspects uh, in his game that will support, uh, support that will support um, he, the way he plays and the way that Port Adelaide plays. So you know, having that uh, pressure forward, small forward that's crafty and kicks goals, you know, his return in 2019 before he was um, you know, guilty of his charges, he only kicked 14 goals, I think, in 13 games. And it's the same as this year, 14 goals in 13 games before he, uh, injuries have taken its toe and obviously the tragic loss of his father. So uh, it, things have gone into play for him. And I think a fresh start in, in those aspects. You know, he's won a premiership. He's done what he could at West Coast. But stability in a different environment may do him a world of good. And you know, I do feel like replacing Gray and Motlop is essential. Having Junior there is is probably... A smarter choice. I'm glad we've gone out, of, you know, outside of the box and tried to target one of these players. But overall, I'm not excited. I, can't, I think you can tell I'm not ecstatic about the decision. But I'm only voicing that as an opinion. I think um, it's very much a wait and see and see exactly how we get the deal done. What's going to get the deal done and performance. I'm going to judge um, his performance purely on the field. Um, and, and how he goes over the course of the season. What does get the deal done? It depends on how much West Coast really want to keep him, I think, or both parties. It's going to be a a little bit complex, I feel. Um, West Coast are not going to match the offer. He's not a free agent. Um, so in that aspect, he's definitely going to come forward with a... It's probably going to be a late second round, a third round pick, perhaps, I think is most reason, reasonable to get the job done. 
this definitely senses a future second round pick. Um, and if we finish higher up the ladder next year, then that's going to be a pick 30, you'd say, around that area, depending if we finish in the top eight, top four. So a top a 30 pick for, for junior is probably most reasonable. That gets the job done. We do want to save up those picks for um, you know, how we get Dunkley or if we go after somebody else, if there's other players in sight. You know, I think being more aggressive in different aspects, not just for junior um, is definitely going to be the forefront picture for Port Adelaide's trade period. In saying that, I, as I said, I think this future second round pick is something I'd offer up. Um, you know, maybe other selections in the draft do get the job done. I trade for a future second and a third round pick for just a third round pick and junior might get the job done to base purely bases on points. So um, maybe it's a future third and junior coming through and, and we send through a, uh, a future second and um, a, this year's third round pick. You know, it balances it out as such. So it, it's something to look at and definitely I think it's the easier deal to get done than say a Dunkley or you know, if, if we go after someone else who's a little bit more complex, we're definitely putting our hat in the ring for a big trade period. So that's something to look out for. I definitely want your opinion, Port fans, because it's a tougher player to get a, you know, get your right opinion on it. It's, it's an opinionated player, is Junior Rioli. I think if you like him, if you don't, definitely when he's at West Coast, you knew he was going to cause a bit of trouble. And in, in his peak, he is a great pressure forward. He's smart and he can kick goals. That's what we need on the field. Off the field, I think, obviously, brings baggage, uh, but that's just a personal aspect that definitely can be refreshed with the new start at a new football club. And Port Adelaide have done wonders for certain players that have come across. So um, I think in that aspect, and us pushing to get back into the top eight, top four, we need to address the areas that we need. And that's probably another midfielder, definitely a small forward to replace a grey and a motlop and a key defender. So if we can tick off Dunkley in the midfield, we can tick off Junior Rioli down forward and go after a key defender, then it's going to be a very successful trade period, I feel. One final thing before I finish up here. You get a Rioli in your side, you win a flag. We've seen the previous um, talks about that. You know, Rioli 2018, West Coast, Rioli, Hawth, uh, Richmond 2019, Cyril back in uh, Hawthorne days. So, I don't know, feeling, you know, kind of thing. If you want to be... Uh, talking about those superstitious uh, acts, then definitely get a Rioli in your side and we might want a flag. But let's see how this pans out. So definitely a talking topic. I'd like to see how much we're offering and I'd like to know exactly what West Coast is going to deal because if they make it a bit more difficult, then if I'm Port Adelaide, I'm not even going to bother. But um, to, it's good to see he's already talked to the coaches. He's been talking with Sean Bergwijn, had a coffee with him, as I mentioned, two at Alberton, and I think with the facilities and, and the programs we have in place at Port Adelaide, it definitely will bring him forward as a person and as a player. So if we do land Junior Rioli, I think Port Adelaide's a good fit for him. Thank you very much for watching this video, Port fans. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on Junior Rioli and any other trade topics that you'd like to talk about. I know we're very much focusing on the trade period with finals going on and, and other things to talk about as well. A lot more fun videos that will come across the uh, next few weeks before we get into the nitty gritty stuff, the trade period, the draft, and then we end, end up at pre-season going into next year. A lot to play out still in uh, this year's off season. So thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content. Check out Pairs on a Pod, our 17 episode season one many guests so make sure you check that out thank you very much for watching as i keep saying my name's anthony and as always calm the pair